it's a fantastic read. Everyone that I give this book to, I think, is driven like the uh, like the characters to the end. I mean, they 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 are totally uh, um, wrapped up in the in the narrative, and they can kind of think it's absurd and think it's ridiculous. But nevertheless, the narrative drive of it makes it one of the best reads that you could ever hope to have. I think there's something to do with. Uh, 1897. I think it's something to do with the fact that right at the end of the Victorian period um, you get this absolute cauldron of um, factors coming together. And Bram Stoker, I think, not necessarily in control of these elements, but he simply has a, uh, has a found a, a, a form which allows them to all to be expressed. So Dracula becomes this condensation of anxieties about empire, of um, the, the, the new sexuality, the new woman, uh, is the race declining, is the empire going to fall apart, uh, is uh, the fact that London is being overrun by all of these new immigrants, should we stop them, should we welcome them, all of these kind of controls that are, that are beginning to emerge. So all of those things come together uh, in, in this real kind of cauldron of a text. Uh, and it's something that I think is, is, remains persistently relevant. So we are even now thinking about you know, anxieties about immigration, anxieties about contamination uh, of uh, the nature of modern sexuality. You can have a very conservative line on that, very optimistic line on that. Um, it's, it, these areas of debate are kind of timeless in some ways, and yet Dracula captures them at a particular moment and gives, gives us those debates in such a crisp form. Yeah, I think Dracula there is driven essentially by by section sexuality. I mean, in the Count, you have this extraordinary figure who who condenses all kinds of um, both sexual anxiety, but also sexual delight, sexual perversity. Uh, it's a book that's full of just truly extraordinary. Um, scenes of, of, of sexual excess that you can't quite believe are written in 1897, whether it's three women vampires crouching over Harker, or it's the staking scene in the graveyard, or Dracula's sexual attack on Mina Harker. All of these scenes are, are kind of openly driven by this um, anxiety, but also delight in sex, sexuality. And, and we are clearly uh, still invested in that sort of uh, uh, element of, of sex in, in the vampire metaphor. I mean, today we have, on the one hand, we have the, the, the very chaste um, vampires of Stephanie Meyer's series. On the other hand, we have the openly kind of sexual delights of the True Blood series. So it's still a debate about sexuality that's going on now. Well, it is a immensely sensationalist, ridiculous, preposterous book, which makes you laugh out loud at times at, at, at the absurdity of it and at the at the kind of heroic kind of cliches of this Christian brotherhood who are going to bring down this kind of evil force. But there is something about it which I think just captures the time that that so many other perhaps mainstream or, or, or realist novels just can't quite capture. I mean, there is a line on... Uh, the, the world of minor literature being able to tell you so much more about the moment in which it's written than a realist novel or, or a Henry James novel, which perhaps has its eye on posterity already, is already editing itself, is already thinking about itself as a, as a serious kind of novel. Where Bram Stoker's sense of, of just writing something uh, fast, rapidly, for the moment, to its times, tells us extraordinary valuable things about late Victorian period.